It's the last chapter. Um, so where were we? So I'm going to rewrite the in another way. There you go. I just took the negative out. So B has to be positive. Yes. So and this can be oh so we need we need B positive and we need C positive. I mean yeah, C positive as well. So how can we show that C is positive? So we need this to be positive. Yeah, look. Right? This should, shouldn't be too hard, right? I don't think. I hope not. So this is what's what's mu over beta? One over R zero. One over R zero. So one over R zero. And what's the other stuff? One over R rho. Minus mu over rho. This has to be positive, right? Okay, so it looks like that. I think if I just do it this way, mu, mu plus gamma, beta rho has to be greater than mu over rho. So, awesome. So that means that mu plus gamma, right? A beta over mu plus gamma has to be less than 1. In other words, for C positive, we need, so C is positive if and only if R, R0 of gamma is less than 1. Oh. Okay, good. So we have the condition. So it's not just it's positive, right? We have a condition. So when C is possible. Awesome. And then we need to be positive and let's see. So there's another uh, bless you. Thank you. Um, that would have been that would have been your homework problem. Except that Eric and Steve said no homework, but to find uh, the arc critical, which I won't show you in a minute. So all this stuff, you have all these conditions. Um, I'm going to just say that, yes, this is positive. <laughs> you can check that for yourself if you like. It's not very, it's not trivial. Actually, it's quite, quite a pain. Um, you can do that if you like. Um, so this shows something like I'm gonna raise the equations here because we know all the quantities and stuff. So this looks like remember transcritical bifurcation, right? Forward. Now we have something that looks like. This is the famous world renowned backward back equation. Now, does it make sense why it's called a backward back equation? Hmm. Yes? No? It's kind of going backwards and then forward. Get it? No. All right, so does it make sense why it has this shape? Yes? No? Remember? Um, no, I don't know. <laughs> the I star is a problem? It's quite the shape of the eye. Oh, okay. It's a problem, right? So that's why it has such. Now, <laughs> this is what I was talking about. When R0 is less than 1, you can, you can be in trouble. 
So R0 less than 1 doesn't imply that the disease will die out. Now, how, like, why does this happen? Like, how come from, we went from here to here, now R0 less than 1? So what's making it more difficult to get rid of the disease or whatever, drinking problem, alcohol, whatever, kind of relapse? Yes, I know you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've known you for a while. That's so dude. <laughs> you know everything. So, the nonlinear relapse. Mm -hmm. right? Nonlinear. Right, let me ask you something because you you picked that you have like three definitions of R not, and you picked that one because that's the one that gives you that parabola dependence. If well, you take any other R not, would you get the same thing? No, no. Th this, this is the one because with the other one, the other one was for mathematical communities. Okay, just notation thing. Because remember all that stuff? There was a lot of mu over beta, and that could be considered the R zero if there's no treatment. Okay. So it's like like an SI. What? Oh. So this is like this, and. So this is just more for mathematical components mm -hmm. because this just implies that it's an SI and there's no nobody could problem. But that, that's not the general R not for the whole system. Uh, this would be the initial rate of growth. For the okay, the initial R. Right. So, so in this case, now we're saying if you're here, but you know what? This is this is an unstable steady state. It's positive, but it's unstable. So if I throw a solution here, I go. Where do I go? Down. Up or oh. down? Oh, yeah. It's down. Down, down, because this is a repeller, right? Mm -hmm. And if I start here? Down. Down. And if I start here? Oh. Oh. So it's not necessarily that you're going to go not go to zero, but what does it depend on? Initial conditions. Initial conditions, right? Remember one of the first thing that I said over there when I wrote the, some important things about bacopurifications is you need to have, if you have enough infectives, even when R0 is less than 1, so enough infectives, right? Even when R0 is less than 1, so you're here, you can have, you can go to the positive steady state even when R0 is less than 1. So now, and this curve can go as back as, you know, depending on your problem, right? It could go, it could be very close and you have like no room to spare. So when you go to a public health official, you say, well, for this particular disease, whatever that is, this is a problem. We're gonna be like, you know, like, I mean, what can you do? Tell me that R0 has to be much, much less than one. So you can compute that by doing the determinant equals zero over there, get that one root there. And that is also not trivial. Um, so, and that depends, it's not, it's, it's not necessarily uh, super hard, it's just to put it in form where it makes sense, because that has to make sense. It's in terms of R zeros and all these quantities and all that stuff. Now, yes? Do you have the dependence of RC with raw, the relaxed Yeah, it, it, it's, it depends on. But is it quadratic of time exponentially? No, linear. no, no, no. It's 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 linear. It's linear. Yeah, it's a non. It's a dimensionless quantity. It's just all parameters, right? It's not. It just comes from the determinant. Like this is just another quantity. It's just very messy. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying that the, the dependence with raw. Yeah, it's is, depending on is, raw. But it's linear. Yeah. It's linear. Okay. Yeah. So RC. I mean, it's not trivial. It's linear. RC is actually the whole parameter space, I believe. Okay. So now, if if R zero is greater than one, where do I go? Up. Up. Now, is there a difference between R zero greater than one here and the one on the transcritical bifurcation? Nope. No difference. 
So this jump is the same as this well, jump. Oh. Yeah. It's fast. Oh, it's much faster, right? It's much faster. So now, now we have some issues here now, right? Because this creates a huge problem. Now we're in this region where if you have enough people infected, you can actually have a problem even when there's zero twice on one. So it's highly dependent on initial conditions. That's when I said the parameter space where this happens is it's very small, right? Because but but under certain conditions it can happen. Now, depending on what the problem is, it can make sense or it might not make sense. So just because you have this kind of form and you're able to find some conditions, you the parameters might not make sense to have this kind of behavior. Um, and if you, for example, if you, for example, are you have R zero greater than one. Mm -hmm. And you want to try to make it less than one? Um, how do you can do that? I mean, is there, um, you know, that in dynamic city you have hysteresis? Right. Mm -hmm. So you can have that in here. I assume, right? But um, it's much more difficult. But how is that related to the you know dynamics of the high being? All right, we didn't we didn't look at that, but that might be. Uh, we, it it went from when when we got to this point. And, and the alcohol model, um, it went from, uh, I think we basically stopped with the math part once we got to here. And then we went from this to translate it into the alcohol model. And pretty much that's where it stopped. So everything was be trying to translating all this into what they wanted, into, well, into what it meant like for them. So so the math kind of stopped with the Bible <coughs> application. But there's a lot of stuff that can be said and done with this. If you just like, if you just look at it as a general model, not necessarily a particular disease, just as a general model, which is what Fred Bauer does, or has done in a couple of papers. So just so you can see it, um, I'll square. Now I was going to try and. Um, Oscar, so that's R sub critical. Okay. So it's kind of messy. Um, so if you do if you do the time series so if you look at the time series let's say you start over here you might increase. And if you start over here, you might you might go to zero. So it highly depends on the so this is the same thing, right? That's it. If you're here, you go, if you're here, you go down. So that's where I see less than zero. That, that. Uh, RC. That, that graph over there is like RC less than zero or something like that? Oh, no, it's IT. No, no. It's not, okay, this is not anymore about... Uh. No, no, this is just time series. Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. So, and now we have some... Yes. You mean this part right here? Okay. So... Remember the other one, right? If R0 is less than 1, disease dies out. Yes? R0 greater than 1, disease increases. Right? So disease dies. In here, disease increases. Now, in this case, R0 less than 1 doesn't imply that the disease will die out. Now, R0 would have to be much, much more less than 1 for it to be in this basin of attraction. Now, what happens in the middle is that you have these two roots that come from the quadratic.
the two positive steady state with all the conditions and all that stuff. So we have two roots. One is unstable, 